to come up with some pretty notes, to be, you know, to be part of the filmmaking process. To me, music is very visual because it evokes pictures. In my head, I listen to his music and don't even have to shut my eyes. I can see the pictures. And so that's why I know, in many respects, I can talk picture to, pictures to Hans. He responds to pictures. Thelma was kind of tricky to just get a grasp on just exactly what it, it was. How do you characterize a film like this, which is about two women who are essentially rebellious to their environment and their way of life and the way, what they've settled for? I wanted that longing in the tune of, right from the word go, right from the beginning, something unobtainable, unattainable for them. and. Um, and a bit rough, you know, a bit, bit sort of boisterous, and and definitely not sort of the girly sentimental thing with a bunch of strings going. It became apparent to me as I was location hunting that it ought to be a journey of really great beauty because it was the last journey. Therefore, they were seeing everything that way, and uh, I always wanted this kind of thematic for them somewhere in there which would have um, a kind of rather sad note to it, but also a kind of romantic note to it, and, uh, and certainly a, an emotional um, yearning. When I was a kid, there was this blues guitarist. Um, I was a huge fan of Pete Haycock from the Climax Blues Band, and he used to slow the records down and learn how to play his solos. And when Ridley said he wanted to make a movie, you know, sort of road movie about America, I thought, I can phone up Pete and maybe he'll come down and play some guitar. This guy came in, Hans and this guy worked together for a few days and they came up with what was this theme that I then found was really emotional, very evocative of the film and very evocative of the journey. Their journey ends with them trapped on the edge of a canyon with no way out. It's very dark and very gloomy and very inevitable. It's like you, you can feel, you know, you, you know, the one thing you're not supposed to do is foreshadow things, but I on purpose foreshadowed very much that it's all going to end badly. Finally, they're trapped, and now things are going to go horribly, horribly wrong. And just like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, there's, there's only one way out for them. And it needs to be some sort of a very intimate yet glorious moment, you know, and it can't be a downer. Um, and at the same time, they're going to die. And so it has to reflect all these different emotions. It has to reflect all these different things. Turn your engine off and place your hands in plain view. We're sitting on the edge of the, the uh, was it, that place is called Dead Horse Point, um, which is now called Thelma Louise Point. It's in Moab in Utah, and um, they say, let's carry on and so then you shift gear into the music that you see at the beginning of the movie and that's why it starts to make sense you strip away everything you don't need and just keep the you know try to keep the essence of that that tune intact let's not get caught what are you talking about let's keep going there is no way out what are they going to do go to mexico and be boring waitresses or something like this. You know, after that adventure, wh where do you go? Um, so I didn't need to play that. I didn't need to play that tension there anymore. So I could play all that early, earlier foreshadow and then let, let them lift off gracefully. <laughs> That's why it works on an emotional level. Just watching it that, that there was oddly enough quite emotional. I got a stab once again. I haven't seen that for like maybe six years.